Hey, welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel, and um, I'm listening to Mali here with some uh, African music, 5995 kilohertz, and I wanted to demonstrate how useful the bandwidths are. I get a lot of people that when I talk about the bandwidths and how, you know, for example, in the uh, St. Jean ATS 909X2, the bandwidths that uh, you can't choose on single sideman is a really big problem. I'll show you here how important bandwidths are using this signal. So if we look at 5995, it's squeezed between a Cuban signal on 6000 and China radio on 5990. Now this is a case like in the 80s. Now let's do something here. I'm going to put the bandwidth to 6 kilohertz, which is Typical of a lot of radios that don't have any filters, and it was typical of a lot of radios in the 80s where you didn't have a lot of choice. So let's go to tune our signal here. Notice how Mali is impossible to listen to. I'm stuck between whatever China is or whatever Cuba is, and it just doesn't give me any possibilities. Think of bandwidth as a tunnel. The larger the bandwidth, the bigger the tunnel. So you might have several lanes of information, but they're all in the tunnel and they can interfere with each other. The more cars you get in a tunnel, the more noise around you. But if you take that tunnel and decide that you're gonna make it smaller for one car at a time, there's less noise and you're alone and you can do a lot more, um, you know, especially in the radio uh, side of it. Think of that signal, the car is a radio signal, and it's alone now. It can do what it wants. It doesn't have interference from all the signals around it. Tunnel is smaller. It does impact the audio. That is something you gotta know because the smaller the tunnel or the smaller the bandwidth, the less audio information you can give out. So it will cut out the highest frequencies audible. So it does degrade if you go too far and squeeze it too much. But there's, in a radio like the Texan H501X here, for example, and a lot of the DSP-based radios today, including the XH, XH Data D808, the Texan PL330, Texan PL990, uh, the Radiwow R108, the fact that you can play with these bandwidths is really amazing because that was a feature for only expensive radios in the past. Now, notice how I'm gonna go get Mali by changing the bandwidth. So bandwidth, six kilohertz right now. Let's go down to five. Whoops. 3.5. Notice how it actually is able to squeeze into the Mali signal now. And of course you could put it even smaller, but there's a threshold where it's too narrow, but it actually now lets me get into the radio television Malienne signal. So, you know, there's kind of a threshold here. I'm gonna accept that sometimes there could be a little bleed over from one of the signals, but audio is definitely good enough to make me listen to Mali here. Without these bandwidths, it's impossible. Without these bandwidths, you can't squeeze enough to just get the signal you want. And that is why bandwidths are so important on a shortwave receiver. And that's why I rant a lot about the fact that in uh, the Sanjin ATS 909X2, they actually did not put any bandwidths selection on single sideband single sideband when there's a lot of think of a, a ham radio contest you want to squeeze in to one particular ham station you can't but on this one you could because the single sideband also has narrow singles uh, bandwidths so this is a quick demonstration of how important bandwidth selection is on a shortwave receiver when you have a lot of signals that are really close together and it gives you the possibility of getting Mali, or in the case of some radios that don't have any choices, you won't hear it. You're gonna miss out because 
the signal squeeze Mali and China on the bottom um, and, and Cuba on the top makes it impossible to hear. If you're enjoying my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.